Um, an inmate at the Virginia Department of Corrections, Red Onion State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. Solitary is difficult to describe to people who's never been in solitary confinement. You're in a small cell. You know, I'm I'm a pretty small guy. You know, I'm only five foot nine. And I can only take about four steps between the door and the bunk before I have to stop and turn around and walk back. You got your toilet with your sink and your mirror up near the front. You got a steel table with a little small shelf up on the wall. Then you got your two bunks or your one bunk, depending on what pod you're in. And you got a couple of steel steps if you're in a double bunk. And you spend 23 hours a day in that cell. The time you come out for one hour of outside recreation in a dog kennel, which is one of those big dog cages that you see. Or you go to the shower. And that's it. Other than that, you you stay in that cell all day long. You don't leave it. Basically, go into your bathroom and try to spend 24 hours in your bathroom. And you'll get an understanding of what solitary is like. You eat all your meals in there. You sleep in there. You read. You write. You do everything in your bathroom. And that's how we live in solitary. got a bright fluorescent light that stays on from 5.45 a.m. until 10 p.m. at night. And when I tell you it's bright, it is absolutely bright. Some guys will take coffee and pour it on a sponge, and then we'll take it and we'll wipe the walls down to stain the white paint. Because the white paint is so bright with the fluorescent lights that it's akin to getting snow blindness. Every single person who does time in solitary confinement, after a couple of years, every last one of them needs eyeglasses. So that's one of the tricks that we'll do is to stain the walls to cut that glare down. You know, we'll take Vaseline or soap, anything we can, and we'll smear it all over the top of the light just to block that fluorescent light, just to keep it from eating at your eyes. After a while, it gets extremely painful. And the thing about solitary is, it's the loneliest place on earth. It's like being lost at sea or lost in the, in, in the, in the Great Sahara Desert. You hear voices, but they blend into the background to the point where most guys no longer even hear them. You're just trapped within that void, within that space. That's your entire world is within that little small cell. That's your earth. That's your planet. That's your galaxy, your universe. And it feels like there's nothing you can do that you will never be able to escape it. You will never get out of it. You're just trapped. You're locked in there. You're you're buried alive. So you do everything within your power to stay sane. And most guys fail. And even the guys who do remain sane, it still affects you. It still affects me. You know, I still struggle with quite a bit of paranoia. Even though I'm now in a, in a, in a general population type of setting, I'm still affected by all of those years in solitary confinement. You know, and my first time after I cut L.A.'s throat, I did five and a half years in solitary. Day after day after day, year after year after year, trapped in that cell. 
at the time, I had no money whatsoever. I had no support. I really wasn't in contact with any member of my family. I had no friends, no pen pals, nobody to call. I had nothing. I had no commissary. I didn't have a TV for a large majority of the time. Eventually, they started selling these little $20 black and whites, and I was able to get one of those. I actually had a guy felt sorry for me, and he had his family send me 20 bucks. I would get two library books every two weeks. You would get four library books a month. And I would read the same book over and over and over again. Because that's all I had to do. And you pace the floor. And because you're so bored out of your mind, because you're so you're so emotional to begin with, you're so pissed off and angry that you're in prison, you're, you're lacking basic necessities and care, you know, as far as your emotional state and everything goes. And... And then you're in the pod or you're on the vent with somebody who loses their mind and goes crazy. And they start screaming and yelling and beating and banging all the time. I mean, it just drives you nuts. And the way the vent and the cells are set up, you have two cells on the bottom. And then you have two cells on top of them. And you got a vent that runs in the middle of the cell, uh, over towards the wall because when you come in you got a flat wall and then you got a wall that cocks at an angle and it's got a little space for the plumbing and the electricity and the, you know the air vents our vents are connected at the top to the cell beside you and the two cells below you and you can talk that's how people in said talk to one another is on the vent you know that's the prison telephone and if somebody goes crazy and starts beating and banging, this dude was certifiably insane. And he could literally beat on the toilet or the side of the sink, the door, the tables, the bed, it wall, it doesn't matter. He could literally beat for 72 hours straight without stopping. And then he would take a little small cat nap. And then he would wake up and start beating again. And that's all this dude did was just beat and bang and make noise after noise after noise. And it drives you freaking insane. I mean, it makes you so damn mad because there's nothing you can do. Hopefully, eventually, you can tune it out, get used to it, but most guys can't. And that right there, that noise drives a lot of dudes crazy in and of themselves. That would have been fine otherwise if you didn't have the insane person in the pod making all that damn racket all the time. You know, and the doors are always slamming shut and closing when the COs are going in and out the pod and... The tray slots are always slamming shut when they're passing out stuff. The noise, oh, man, I cannot begin to describe the noise to you. It is it is horrible. It, I mean, it really, really affects you so bad when you're in it. And everything is made out of concrete and steel. So it's even worse. And it just, it just reverberates throughout the entire block, out the, the entire pod. You just, you can't escape it. And you get these little thin mattresses to sleep on that, I mean, you just sink right through them. Everything in it, it's not designed to teach you a lesson. It's not designed to teach you to behave yourself. It's designed to keep you insane. It's designed to drive you insane. I mean, that's that's the whole purpose of solitary confinement. Now, I get it. When you have someone out there that, you know, that has done stuff like I've done, slitting someone's throat and whatnot, yeah, you can't exactly just say, oh, well, yeah, you're good, man. Just don't let it happen again and leave you in population. No, you got to have a place to put them. 
But there, there has to be a better way of doing it. I mean, there has to be a better way of doing it than, than the current status quo. And that's, I mean, that's a little bit of what solitary is like. And like I said, I mean, I can sit here and try to explain it to the best of my ability. But if you don't experience it, you're never going to truly understand it. I mean, that's like me walking up to a woman who's giving birth to a child and I feel your pain. I understand you. She's just going to look at me like I've lost my damn mind. Because unless I push the baby out, I don't know what it's like. Yeah, I can comprehend it. I can understand. Yeah, it freaking hurts like hell. But, you know, that's it. That's as far as my intellect can take me. To truly understand that you have to go through it. And I pray to God you never, ever truly understand it. Because this is one of the worst places in existence. It's basically a torture chamber. And there are going to be a lot of people who spends a lot of time in solitary confinement in the United States of American prison system. And eventually them guys are going to get released from prison. And they're going to go home and they are going to do horrible things because solitary has driven them to a point where they can't comprehend anything but their own pain. They're like a dog with rabies. Only thing you can do is put them down. And that's, and that's what the prison industrial complex is doing to prisoners in the U.S. because they don't care about your family. They don't care if a guy comes home and rapes your wife or your daughter or your mother or sister. They don't care if a guy comes home and murders you, steals your money. They don't care if a guy comes home and he gets a high-powered rifle and he goes into a mall and kills 30, 40 different people. The prison industrial complex in the United States of America doesn't give a damn about you or your family. So long as the United States government, the federal government, and the state governments continue to pour billions of dollars into their bank accounts, they don't give a damn about you and they never will because it's all about business. It's all about money. There is no more rehabilitation in the prisons in America. It's just throw them in there, warehouse them, enslave them, drive them crazy, make them worse off when they leave than they were when they went in so they will come home and they will do something to get locked back up in prison so that they have guaranteed billions of dollars of profit every single day year. They don't want you being rehabilitated. They don't want to teach you anything. They don't want to teach you self-sufficiency. You have one minute remaining. They don't want to give you an education because if you get those things, you're going to go home and not come back and they can't make more money off of you. They can't get more money out your family, out the government. This has been Red on your Randy. Hopefully I've opened your eyes to some of the truth of what's going on in American prisons. Take care and stay safe. Thank you for using GTL.